Hi, my name is Sam Hong. I'm a research fellow at the CGD Center for Multiple Sclerosis and um, we'll be starting as a junior faculty member in July. Um, thank you. Uh, so most of my work is in the lab. I spend about four days um, doing basic science research and uh, one day a week uh, seeing patients. And so I'll be describing in kind of broad terms uh, what my lab is interested in and what kind of work we do. Um, so the title of my presentation today is How uh, Do Barrier Cells of the Central Nervous System Control Immune Cell Entry and Function? And so uh, we still don't know what causes MS. Um, we do understand steps in MS pathophysiology, how relapses form. Uh, one of the big mysteries in the basic science of MS is how relapsing disease transitions into progressive disease. So there are real gaps in the knowledge of the basic science of how um, MS pathophysiology uh, proceeds and progresses that um, we're hoping to kind of attack in our work um, here. So um, in multiple sclerosis lesions, we know in relapses, immune cells infiltrate the central nervous system. This is our broad term that we refer to the brain and spinal cord as the central nervous system. So immune cells, which are the cells that fight off infection, um, they uh, exit the bloodstream and enter the central nervous system and attack. And that is the sort of um, uh, first event in how a relapse starts in MS. And uh, we know from brain tissue from patients with MS that within lesions, we see immune cells accumulate around blood vessels. Um, typically, these are veins of the brain and the spinal cord. And so this is a picture showing um, immune cells in a space around the blood vessel in the brain. And, uh, in the brain. Um, and these spaces are called perivascular spaces. So I'll describe a little bit in more detail what, what this space means. Um, and uh, recent advances in neuroimaging techniques, high resolution MRI, um, has shown that uh, many MS lesions, if not all of them, form around a central vein. So um, the, the characteristic appearance of an MS lesion is that immune cells are crossing um, the blood vessel wall of a vein and then accumulating within the space around the vein and then ultimately they infiltrate into the tissue and rev up um, the tissue with inflammation and, and attack. Um, so immune cells um, have to cross two physical barriers to actually access the tissue of the brain and the spinal cord. The, uh, the central nervous system is a unique organ in this regard in that it has this barrier system. And um, we can speculate why this evolved. It's because um, the neural networks uh, that operate in your brain and spinal cord are really highly sensitive um, tissues. So uh, for neurons to work um, and process information in an optimal way, uh, the uh, electrolyte milieu and the, the chemical milieu around these cells has to be very tightly controlled. So we evolved this barrier system between the bloodstream and the actual tissue of the brain and spinal cord to protect the tissue from all of the random trash and cells and bacteria that are circulating around in the body. And so um, we evolved this two barrier system. It's often referred to as the blood brain barrier, um, which I think is a, um, it's a confusing term because you imagine just one barrier. But what this involves is really um, a really highly structured two barrier system. So this is a, a zoomed out view of how the blood supply um, uh, enters into the brain. So this is a, a coronal view, sort of front view of the brain. And um, you can see blood vessels, they enter the central nervous system and um, they circulate underneath the lining of the brain in a space um, called the meninges. And then they um, dive into the tissue of the brain and then they supply the brain with oxygen and um, nutrients. And then um, these, these arteries form capillaries and then veins and then they exit. And so the highly uh, structured barrier system of these blood vessels is that um, you have two layers. So one is the blood vessel wall, and then the second layer is a layer called the astrocyte wall. And these are called astrocytes because they're star-shaped cells. And so this is a, if you can focus your attention on the, um, 
figure at the bottom, this is a pared down illustration of what this two barrier system looks like. So the black circle is the blood vessel wall and those um, gray bow tie shaped looking structures are, um, uh, you can think of them as bolts. We call them tight junctions. So these are structures that seal the cells together and prevent things from exiting the bloodstream and getting into the brain and <coughs> spinal cord. And then the second wall around the blood vessel wall is um, these are processes of these star-shaped cells called astrocytes. And um, so you have this two barrier system where you have the vascular endothelium, which is the blood vessel wall, also referred to as the BBB or blood, blood brain barrier. And then the second barrier are these <laughs> astrocytic end feet, which is also referred to as the gliolimitans or the GL. So these are just abbreviations. You don't have to kind of focus in on those. And then the space between barrier one and barrier two is the perivascular space. And that's that space where we see all the immune cells accumulate in an MS lesion. So one of the big questions is how do immune cells, which are the cells that mediate inflammation and fight off infection, cross the, both of these barrier walls? What drives them to get out of the bloodstream and into the CNS tissue to do damage and attack? Um, the, the brain and spinal cord. Uh, so we're really focused on the role of the second barrier, these astrocytes of the gliolimitans, in communicating to immune cells as they're crossing. So as you can see from the last figure, the astrocyte layer is the most distal structure uh, before immune cells actually enter the brain. So what's happening when immune cells are getting past these barriers. And so we know in early inflammation, the first figure on the left, um, immune cells uh, break open the blood brain <laughs> barrier and they traffic into the perivascular space. And that's what we see on the tissue of MS patients within lesions a lot of the time. And then ultimately in late inflammation, those immune cells break past the second barrier and get into the brain and the spinal cord. So it's a two-step process. So within, so within lesions, you see the cells in the perivascular spaces in some lesions, and then in more uh, later lesions, you see cells in the tissue. And so our hypothesis is that when cells are in the perivascular space, they're actually communicating with the astrocytes and receiving signals that tell them to either enter again to the CNS and do their damage or stay within those perivascular spaces. So this is uh, our model and we're trying to understand what the signals that uh, drive each step of attack are. So in healthy tissue, we have a closed vascular barrier where the cells are in the bloodstream. In early inflammation, those cells can break through the first barrier and get into the perivascular spaces. And then in late inflammation, they break through the second barrier and actually reach the tissue. So we're interested in what the signals are that mediate the, the second to the last step, because we think that if we can prevent cells from accessing the CNS tissue, that would prevent disability. And then our other hypothesis is that the immune cells communicating with these astrocytic end feet are inducing some kind of chronic signature in the astrocyte cells. And this may be um, a pathway that mediates the chronic neurodegenerative phase of progressive MS. So the link between inflammation and later neurodegenerative processes. And why might we think this? It's because in chronic MS lesions, in the brains of chronic MS patients, we see reactive morphologies of these astrocytes. So we know that the astrocytes are changed in a chronic way um, that extends beyond the acute relapsing phase. So with, with the inflammation, and that's inflammation caused by what? Any number of reasons? Or yeah, so that, that's mm -hmm. the big question, what the precipitating event is. And so I think at, at, low, at low levels under resting conditions, the um, immune cells are chronically surveilling the CNS to look for infections, to fight off infections. And we know that a low level of cells get past the first barrier and are circulating in the perivascular spaces, surveilling the CNS for infection. 
And so there's some process that um, dysregulates the, um, uh, the, the, the levels of inflammation. And then once you start this off, different cell types of this structure can start to recruit more immune cells and lead to an autoimmune attack. But we don't understand the details of that. Um, so I just want to show you some pictures from our work in the lab. This is um, uh, immunostain where we highlight with color certain components of that vascular structure. So these, uh, what you see in the green are these um, uh, tight junctions of the astrocyte layer. So this is the second layer. And then we're working with um, a collaborator, uh, Dimitrios Davlos at Cleveland Clinic to do live imaging in mice to um, film immune cells trafficking past both layers during a mouse model of MS. And then we're also doing human um, MRI studies here in our translational neuroimaging group to look at the perivascular spaces in MS patients. So one really interesting question is if um, in, in MS patients, are there more perivascular spaces? Are there larger perivascular spaces? Is the perivascular size and number a marker of inflammation? And could we use these high resolution imaging techniques to get a picture of what the um, status of disease activity might be at a given moment? So we're um, uh, recruiting patients as well uh, to get some of these uh, preliminary studies done. So this is really exciting.